In this section, we're going to understand how to identify insect pests. We're going to cover the most important pests in soybean in Louisiana. We're going to understand how to determine if a control needs to be used. And we're going to recognize where to find control guidelines. For most agronomic crops, as we covered before, an IPM program consists of monitoring and sampling, identifying, consulting your control action guidelines, and then applying the tools and tactics. In our last segment, we covered monitoring and sampling. Now that we have those different insects, now we need to identify what's there. Then we can decide what kind of control actions we're going to take. So in identifying an insect, most pest management tools and tactics are effective only against a certain pest species. So what I use for three-cornered alfalfa hopper control is not going to be the same as what I used for soybean looper control, for instance. Thus, pests must be accurately identified in order to select the control management option. Misidentification can lead to pest control failure. So for instance, if I do misidentify my soybean looper compared to my velvet bean caterpillar, here we're looking at the number of pro legs in the back. If our soybean looper, if we've misidentified and we know that the product that we want to use is really something that can only be used for VBC, such as a pyrethroid, and we put it on our soybean loopers, we could actually flare our soybean loopers. In other words, because the product's not going to kill the looper, it's going to kill off our natural enemies, as we've discussed previously in our uh, segments here on Soy 101. And if in doubt, of course, in NA identification, seek out an expert. Your county agents or parish agents are going to be people who can identify insects. If they don't know, they can then send it to the university for some true entomologists to be able to identify those insects. We need to consult identification keys. So there are several products out there. Many are well is illustrated and provide key diagnostic features. Now, for our soybean insect pests in Louisiana and the Mid-South in general, we have a nice field guide that we've created through the LSU Ag Center for weed, insect, and disease field guide. We're showing you the, uh, the website that you can go and click on those to be able to identify your insects. When you do pull up that guide, uh, this app, this is a web-based app, uh, it's free. You can go through a web browser and look at it. What you're going to get is you're going to get three different icons. You're going to see weeds, insects, and you're going to see pathogens. If you click on the insect section, that's going to open up a segment that's going to have something that says stink bugs. Those are your shield-shaped bugs. It's going to have uh, lepidopteran pests. Those are your insect caterpillars or worms, as we call it in Louisiana. And then all the other pests, such as your bean leaf beetles and three-cornered alfalfa hoppers. If, for instance, you click on that icon for your stink bugs, it's then going to pull up a list of stink bugs that might be different pests in soybean. You can then click on that. For instance, if you click Southern Green Stink Bug, it's going to pull up the identification keys that you can use to identify that insect. It then is going to say when it's going to be in those fields, and then can give you a link also to what kind of uh, what thresholds you may be using. Another good guide online, soybean insect identification guide through the LSU Ag Center, is a visual diagnostic guide. It has a common insect pest problems in southern soybean production areas. And here, this lists over different 50 different insect pests. Now, I can't cover all of those today. And at the end, we're going to cover some key pests that we may be uh, needing to control. But here, you'll be able to use this to visually look through and identify what insect pest you have. Once you've definitively identified your pest and you have the pest counts from your field from the sampling, it's time to consult the control action guidelines. And based on these guidelines, you may do nothing. So you've gone out, you've sampled your field, you've found no insects, you did, or you've found a few insects, and they're not at the threshold, then you don't do anything. You may have to sample again, and then you use, if you do have to, you could may need to use a tactic to reduce the pest populations. So when we do nothing, why are we doing nothing? Well, the pest might always be below economic injury level. We may have an insect pest that never really causes a problem. So you've gone through, you've sampled, you found your insect pest, but it never gets to a level where it's going to cause any damage to the plant. Your crop might be able to tolerate low levels of injury. You can use any kind of tactic that you use. It might be too costly. Not necessarily for soybeans, but for some other high-value vegetable and fruit crops. Very few products are available. The products that you use, insecticides or other control tactics, are very expensive. And sometimes it might not be have any product that's going to be cost-effective for you. 
So once again, tying back into integrated pest management, remember it's economic value as well. Risk that the grower feels, economic value of your crop. You may have to sample again because your pest is below your economic threshold. Remember, the economic threshold is the level that you want to apply the control tactic because by the time it reaches the economic injury level, you want to have controlled it before it's caused that damage. So you may have to sample again because it's below the economic threshold. Pest populations are static and not increasing. You may going to need to sample again. And when we get to that use tactic, what are we doing? Well, that pest has reached that economic threshold, so you consulted your guide. It's told you what that action threshold is. For instance, for southern green stink bug, one of our major soybean pests, here for that one, it's 36 bugs per 100 sweeps. So in the previous sampling uh, unit, we looked at how to use a sweep net. You know that you've collected 36 bugs and you've done 100 sweeps. It's time for you to use a control tactic. Uh, also, when you need to use that control tactic is that the pest populations have been increasing. So you don't want to use a control tactic when you've gone out, you've reached threshold, but you've just barely reached threshold and they haven't been increasing very quickly. Because, remember, it's an economic threshold based on the fact that that insect pest is going to be, populations are going to be increasing. And you need to decide which tactic or tool best fits your pest management program and implement it. For most of us, that's going to be insecticides. We're using a sampling plan, and you're going to use an insecticide control. Where can you find those control action guidelines? Well, these are very well established, can be found in your extension publications. Louisiana has the Louisiana Insect Pest Management Guide that provides and is compiled every year by LSU Ag Center experts. It includes thresholds and suggestions for pest control in Louisiana. One of the major pests that we have in Louisiana is the red-banded stink bug. It's the most damaging pest in soybean. We have a control guide. Here's an example of what the control guide is going to look like. You go to red-banded stink bug, go over to the far right, you're going to find when to treat. So what's its economic threshold? Red-banded stink bug example, 16 bugs in 100 sweeps. Below that, it gives you a cautionary value that says, talks about 8 ounces of acephate may not give sufficient control. And why is that? Well, previously we've talked about insecticide resistance. What we have in red-banded stink bug is we have resistance, very high levels of resistance to acephate. What that means is if you go and you're going to use, you look at what insecticide you're going to use, you look at orthene, that's acephate, gives you a range of 12 to 16 ounces. You want to use a higher level because at the 8 ounce rate, which is still in the guidelines, an acceptable rate, may not give you sufficient control. So we've covered the different, uh, understand how to identify the insect pests, where to look for your control needs, and where to recognize where to find the control guidelines. Let's just cover quickly what the main uh, soybean insect pests are in Louisiana. Early season, we have three-cornered alfalfa hopper. Three-cornered alfalfa hopper is going to be controlled primarily by using your insecticide seed treatments. Now that doesn't mean three-cornered alfalfa hopper is not going to occur mid and late season. It just means as soon as those soybeans are up out of the ground, you need to be checking for different pests. For the primarily one early season, three-cornered alfalfa hopper. It's going to cause girdling on the plant, and these girdles under high winds or high production can then tip over, crack the plant, and you're not going to be able to harvest it. For mid-season, typically what we have of our stink bug pests, these are going to be our southern green stink bug, our brown stink bugs, and our red-banded stink bug. Red-banded stink bug is the most resistant to insecticides, the hardest to control. It's also the most damaging of our insect pests. That's why our thresholds for red-banded stink bug are very low, 16 per 100 sweeps. Southern green stink bug, on the other hand, and green stink bugs, similar. Southern green stink bugs and green stink bugs have a specific diagnostic keys. You're going to go and need to look at those to be able to correctly identify those. Both of those, though, are very easy to control, and you can use the pyrethroids, a very cheap product, to be able to control southern green stink bug. Brown stink bugs, and this is a very this is a complex of stink bugs that are brown in shape and color. Now, one of the brown stink bugs is actually a beneficial. We talked about natural enemies in a previous topic. This stink bug you do not need to use or control for. However, you can use, there are different diagnostic keys for that. 
The primarily, the key characteristic for your spine soldier bug, the beneficial stink bug, which is brown in color, is that the wings over the back go past the abdomen. For the other brown species, they do not. And within our brown species, we have the brown stink bug, Euschistus cervus, Euschistus quadrater are going to be the two main browns. They're going to be harder to control. Pyrethroids will be semi-effective, but you're going to need to use more acephate or the neonicotinoids to control those pests. Our late season pests, now once again, you could still see three-cornered alfalfa hopper. You could still see stink bugs. So very late season, what you're going to see are our lepidopteran pests. These are our caterpillars coming in. The primary pests are soybean looper, velvet bean caterpillar, green clover worm, and corn earworm at some levels. But really, soybean looper is the most primary lepidopteran pest we have in our soybean. Going to be arriving July to August. It's the, it's the caterpillars that are defoliators of your plants. If you find those from when it's still in the reproductive stage of the soybean up through till R6, you could have significant vegetative loss which correlates to less photosynthesis and less yield. What you're going to need to use to control the soybean looper, pyrethroids, which are used to control some of the stink bugs and three-cornered alfalfa hopper, are not going to control your lepidopteran pests, uh, specifically not going to control the soybean looper. It could control green clover worm and velvet bean caterpillar, but not the soybean looper. Soybean looper is resistant to pyrethroids. What you're going to use are different control products, such as the diamides, or the different insect growth regulators. And with that, we've covered what the major insect pests and soybean are, how to identify those, and where to find those control guidelines.